this is uh, John, Denise, Denise, and we are two and one, one is us. We. <laughs> um, so I uh, just welcome back. I uh, hope you are uh, or have been tuning in to our topics. Uh, we've been talking about leaving, cleaving, and now and, what's uh, going to be one, one flesh. flesh. Actually, um, that's kind of like the whole two and one is us. It's yeah. kind of uh, represents the. The unity and the oneness that God has called us um, in marriage, and to value that, um, to value that. So we want to talk about that. We think it's important. Um, how becoming one? Um, what does that mean to us? What does that mean in our marriage? Uh, I think that most people, when we talk about becoming one flesh, um, what first comes to mind is maybe sexual unity, becoming one, hey. leaving father and mother and becoming one. But I think that's um, the most elementary level um, of thinking about becoming one flesh because um, marriage is more than is that. more. Yeah, it's there's more way more to marriage and becoming one flesh than just sexual unity. And we'll talk about sexual unity in another um, time. Another time. But this time we're going to talk about becoming one flesh and what the Bible. Um, basically what it, what, what what god's it means yeah what, it. what exactly what it, what god's intention is so what is it god's intention for one flesh in one marriage is a total commitment to one another to yeah to basically um functioning as a one team uh, share can, everything sharing everything ideas um, our bodies our emotions our feelings our goals Everything about ourselves, uh, everything that I should do or do is always um, for the benefit of, of his. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, whatever I do, to not to detriment our relationship, but to better our relationship. It is big. Well, you know, when we look at marriage, it's, it's, we're looking at a marriage that is, is becoming one. We complement one another. Um, and so we, we, we like to consider it as a team, right? We're not against each other, uh, we're for each other. Total unity. Total unity. Oneness. <laughs> um, and so like when you're on a team, you play together, you have the same goal in mind. You, you um, even though we might be different. Right, like our things. body parts, for example. Uh, the way we think at times might be different. Mm -hmm. Um, um, but even though we're different, it doesn't mean that I have to make you into someone you're not. Or, you know, that or, doesn't mean becoming one flesh, m make you into somebody that I want you to be. Right, and, and, and therefore anything that I do shouldn't be something to hurt you. Right. Um, just because we're different. And so we, we have to be mindful of that when we're looking at marriage as one flesh. Mm -hmm. um, we are we are to... Um, you know, do things for the sake of the other ones with their benefit to encourage them, love them. Um, you um, know. It makes me think of like our bodies, how um, our bodies, we all have different parts, fingers, fingernails, feet, ears, um, but our whole body functions as one. And so I think that's the one flesh that the Lord is speaking about. Um, There's different parts, but they all work together, together. when it's normally functioning right and so I, I, you know when we're when we're doing it the way God has called us right like we can't go into oneness or to become one flesh without leaving and cleaving mm -hmm. like it's just like a package right like God has given us um, these these kind of like three parts component for us to have a marriage um, which God designed um, for our benefit mm -hmm. and for his glory and so um, looking at it, but you know what hinders that oneness? Because I, I I know oneness is not an easy thing to right. do. Like I've seen in our marriage, um, how how at times it's been difficult for us to become one, to think one, to um, you know at times selfishness comes in and pride comes in, and so um, you know how do how do we defeat that, and how does that come by? And, and well, I think that definitely um, selfishness, our pride, and and that that's rooted out of sin. Mm -hmm. And so the way to, to overcome that is um, just looking at the cross and what Jesus did for us. Yeah, um, yeah. So w when you look at it, right, like Adam and Eve, and so um, you you have this this chapter in Genesis where it says, you know, they were they were both naked and unashamed. But uh, when sin entered into you know their relationship, 
um, it destroyed their oneness because now they were ashamed, right? Like they were hiding from yeah, from God, and, and and so therefore you see what sin does, and it destroys, it separates uh, what oneness, what unity is mm -hmm. uh, from what God has intended. And so the only way um, to to recover that is 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 through Christ, is running to the cross. And I think that's what we seen successful in our marriage is whenever we're going through any issues or we face any circumstance or problem, it's like, you know, who's going to run to the cross first? Mm -hmm. um, and we can't look at that as a competition. Um, um, and I just want to say that sometimes um, in our marriage, um, things come up. I mean, we have four kids. Um, our life is really busy. We're, we're constantly on the go, constantly on the go. But when when issues come up and problems come up, I, I, um, I see how quick he is to to forgive and um, that that humbles me in the moment um, where I may be wanting to lash out um, and I see the way he is just humble and how he treats me with love and then that tones me down to to say sorry or to to ask him for forgiveness and 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 it brings me back to recognize okay I need to check myself and how I'm acting and then that way we can continue to to work out the situation and not be against each other in in that moment instead we then we look at each other and start working together big time yeah it's, that's uh, this unity that's oneness that's what God had called us right like we're not gonna put each other down um, in the midst of an issue or circumstance, but we lift each other up. Mm -hmm. And so um, th there's so many Bible references that we can use for that. Um, but in the most practical way, um, even if you're not a Christian, like you, you should, when you look at marriage, um, consider your spouse or your husband um, or wife um, as, as priority is more important. I mean, even in the Bible, the Bible verse that comes to mind is um, to love your neighbor as yourself. And sometimes I feel like if you don't even love yourself, how can you love somebody else the way you're supposed to love them? Um, but I think that that's when we look at Christ and how he loved us. Big time. How much he loved us that he sent his only son to die for us. Yeah. As, as an unchristian, I, I just want to add, because I just said, you know, uh, how to value each other in marriage, regardless if you're Christian or not Christian. But um, if you're not a Christian, sometimes it becomes in our own effort. And so our own effort is uh, stained by, by sin because of Adam and Eve. And so therefore we, we, we might fall short. And so the only way to be able to um, lift each other up and be able to show each other grace, it is through Christ alone. And so um, we have seen that as our, our cornerstone, our anchor, um, our, our foundation that has been able to bear fruit in our marriage and so uh, oneness is a big deal one flesh is a big deal and so uh, when you look at that when we speak about that it's, it's total unity of everything mm -hmm. um, in life and so uh, be encouraged with that yeah. um, seek that value that and if you don't see total unity in your marriage maybe you can ask yourself um, what am I doing to encourage unity, one flesh? What am I doing to to motivate my husband to to wanna trust in me, to wanna, you know? Yeah, like the, the, this is your, you know, your spouse, and and the, if there's anybody there that you want to be transparent, that you want to be intimate, that you want to show all of you, that's the one person, you know. Um, besides God, right, like in a human relationship speaking, like that is it, that's the person you want to be that to and give all of you to that person, so. Um, right, and like you said in the last segment, um, you know, that we're here to enjoy each other um, because when we are in heaven, we're gonna be there to enjoy Christ. And so in the word it says, a man who finds a wife finds a good, good thing. Mm -hmm. So right now it's it's a matter of pleasing each other and enjoying each other and in that then we are reflecting that unity, that oneness, that one flesh that God wants um, us to achieve here. Awesome. So um, 
I hope you've enjoyed that um, or somewhat applied into your life and to be encouraged to your marriage, an encouragement to your marriage. Um, and so again, you know, Genesis chapter two, God um, kind of makes an institution, a declaration, a uh, uh, he designs, create marriage, and he says, you know, hu you know, husbands leave your father and your mother and cleave to your wife and become one flesh. And so, uh, those three words are so important into marriage, and we hope um, and pray. Yeah, and God's purpose in marriage is total unity. So just like He's that's it, oneness, one with complement one another. Exactly. So take it easy. God bless. Stay tuned. Peace out.